Hi, my name is Sean Grace and I would like to welcome you to Grace Life Antiques. On this channel, we will take you on a journey into the past, sharing with you items from our collection of antiques and collectibles. I have been in the antique trade for over 40 years, mostly in Ireland and now here in Canada. None of the items that you will see featured on this channel are for sale. They are from our personal collection, which we use and enjoy on a daily basis. And hopefully now you will enjoy seeing and hearing about them, and their stories, and the history, the makers, and how we come to own some of these beautiful relics from the past are as interesting as the items themselves. Please feel free to leave a comment or ask a question below. And before you go, like, share and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will be notified of future uploads. Hi, welcome back to Graceland Antiques. Today we're going to discuss this little Edwardian of ours, right? But before we do that, there's something I'd just like to discuss with you and just to see what your opinion is. And please feel free to leave a comment or ask a question down below, okay? Now, recycling, and um, there are, obviously, there's great interest in that at present time, global warming and so on and so on, right? Antiques are the ultimate in recycling. When you consider, like, that we have, you know, there's furniture, that it goes back hundreds of years, hundreds and hundreds, like, of years, like, you know, three, four hundred years, like, kind of, and so on. And there's furniture that's a lot newer than that, like, the furniture from the early 1900s, 1920s, like, and even furniture up into the 1950s, 60s, and that, which is some beautiful furniture from all those periods, right? And we have all these young people who are very quick to tell all of us older people what we have done to mess up with the, the planet, like, and these are the very people who won't buy antiques, like, how do I know this? Well, I know because I have lots and lots of friends, and I have lots of contacts, and I go into lots of antique shops, and antique, and antique emporiums, and various places, and I also go to charity shops and yard sales, and everything else, you know, and I go to private homes, like, where we often buy things in private homes, okay? And they will tell us, the people will tell us that their families simply do not want them. What is wrong with people? Like, I mean, the things themselves are beautiful, like, you know, and very functional. Like, okay, it's like a rocking horse isn't exactly a list, unless you have a child and so on, you know what I mean, but it is still a beautiful thing. But a lot of the furniture, the table that this is sitting on, like, you know what I mean, a Victorian dining table, beautiful table, like, I mean, you can see the eight, ten people, like, no trouble, and a beautiful table, and sturdy, and, you know what I mean, will last for years to come, like. But they, if every person, uh, you know, if all of the people of the world and all of the young people, etc., and as we go forward, like people, if people in each household only bought one piece of antique, look at the amount of trees and other materials that would be saved and that wouldn't be needed to be done. This is not necessarily, no, I'm not necessarily saying this to promote the sales of antiques, because as you know, none of our items here are for sale. That's not what this is about. I'm just kind of annoyed, like, that people can walk past beautiful antique items, ignore them, like walk past antique shops, walk past the yeah, second hand shops, and go to the likes of, dare I say, Ikea, etc., and go in and pay big money, like, you know, big money for modern stuff that is this, in effect, destroying the planet. That's what's destroying the planet. It's the modern method and the modern way it's destroying it. Antiques and so on are not destroying Now, that's why it's a rent over with, okay? So now we'll start in and we'll talk about this little item here, okay? So, first of all, I'll tell you, we were out for a drive, myself and Susan. We were heading for, to Kultus Lake to go for a swim, okay? So we're driving down the road, and uh, here we see, out the, on the side of the road, a piano with free road of it, the, 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 the free side was sitting where the music sheet would sit on the piano, you know, free. And uh, it looked beautiful, right? The piano. So I said to Susan, turn, turn, turn. What do we want that for? I said, we don't. I said, we turn anyway. I said, we're going to look at it. So we turned anyway, went back, and we pulled up, and I got out. And it was just a magnificent piano. 
as pianos go now, just beautifully, world war that veneer of piano like just gorgeous like and I'm thinking to myself, how could I get this old and reuse the timber from it and everything else, you know? And of course I just had to give up on the whole idea like, because a piano is an extremely awkward way the thing to move like and we have no way, we have no way of moving it. And you know, you need a lot of help and so on, you know. But as I'm out, what do I see? Well in the, a short driveway, here I see work going on like and a heritage home being knocked. And that's obviously where the piano had come from. Their drive. So I see men working there, you know, and uh, I said, you have to excuse the cats making noise here around me. But um, I, I, so I stroll up the drive anyway, and there's a fella there, and he sees me coming, like, and he stops. He's stripped to the waist, like, and covered in tattoos and everything else. I said, enough, enough, looking kind of a chap now, to be honest with you, you see. So I say, how are you doing? And he says something to me in French. Oh, I have no French, so I've done something, so I'm not going to be anything. So anyway, I said, how are you doing again, like, and shrugs like you know and uh, I said can I uh, look around and he didn't know what I was saying so I done you know kind of ingested he said to me no you know so while this is going on I see a, a, a man driving a, a big digger thing like with a big grab on the front of it like you know and he's tearing the house down like and he's pulling away and stuff like and he had obviously reached down into a basement like, and he pulled up a grab of stuff like timber, bits of timber and so on and so on and he was pulling it up and tearing it out like and he kind of was flinging it kind of out to one side like you know and out the corner of my eye I saw something kind of flash by you know and I kind of turned up and I said oh and I kind of pointed over you know and he was at the and I, and I said, I said to, to, to stop the digger you know he still didn't fully understand me kind of as such but he kind of shrugged and he shouted something and then the digger stopped and I said, I said, I said five minutes I said five minutes and he you know, so off I went and I didn't give him a second chance and I went over and lo and behold, I move a few bits of timber and everything that man had just pulled out and thrown out like along with this and here's this little beauty, right? Now I say little beauty now, it was lying on its side, the head was practically off and snapped across here, it's jointed actually across here anyway, but it had broken and it was over on its side, okay? and one of the ears missing completely and this here was missing this part these are referred to as bows here okay so you have the bows and then you have stretchers here okay so there's obviously one two three four five six stretchers across this one right two tall ones at either end for decorative purposes and then two here where the legs are attached for strength and two here in the middle like for just all together, okay. So this was missing from here. This whole piece here was missing, and this was missing, okay. So what I done was I pulled it out, took a look at it, like, and I thought to myself, "Oh my goodness, this is that just a beauty, you know?" And uh, decided that I wasn't going to leave it after. So I dragged it over, and when your man is still standing there with his mouth open, like, and I said to him, "How much? How much?" And he said to me, "I, I, I don't know." He said, and started gesturing to me, like, I think they just wanted me off the side, really, you know. So they could keep going like and, and, and uh, so on. So I said, how much? And he said, no, no, no. He said, go, 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 take it, you know. So I said, no, no, no. I said, I can't. So I reached out in my pocket, like, right, and I, uh, I, to, to pay him something for it because I didn't want to take it for nothing, like, because, I mean, if you take it for nothing, it's not really yours, you know. So what I done, uh, as I said, reached out in my pocket thinking I had a $20 note in my pocket. And I thought, sure, surely $20, like, you know what I mean, I'll chance it, like, and if he doesn't take the 20, he'll want 50, you know, but he, you know, he might take the 20. So I reached down anyway, and I went, with great gusto, and I pull out this note, like, and I hold it up to him, like, yeah, and it's just as I hold it up that I do it, it's not a $20 note, it's a $5 note, like, I mean, goodness me, talk about insulting the man, you know? So I'm standing there now, now I have it in my hand, like, what do I do, you know what I mean? So I kind of thought, ooh, so I kind of gesture towards him. He started roaring, laughing, and said something over his shoulder, like, to the other lads, who kind of then turned around, it was quite a group from there now, like, and then, you know, so he turned around to speak to others, and when he turned around, like, he had some very interesting tattoos on his back, and, yes, very interesting tattoos on his back, is what he had. So anyway, uh, I left standing there with this $5 in my hand, and he says it, so he turns back to me, and he reaches out, and he takes it, and he holds it up in the air, and he kind of waves it, like, you know, and there's a big cheer from all the other lights, and they all start clapping, and everything else, you know, and laughing and joking, so I said, well, that's fine, he took it, so that me just fine. So I take it away anyway, 
take it home. And then, as I said, there was an ear missing, so I made replace the ear. Actually, the ear here on this side is the one that was missing. And so I made it using a box knife. Got a little piece of pine, carved it out of it, and just glued it back in place. And as I said, the tail was missing, the neck was missing. So what I done was I got rope, pieces of rope, I tied the rope around this part of the neck here, tied it down around here and got a stick that, and I just simply glued it up and I just simply tightened it up and then held it in place so that it kind of cramped itself and, you know, pulled it back and left it then for, you know, for a week or more in fact actually I left it like, you know, to make sure that it had set because it was pretty bad like, you know, and then um, this one here I just simply took a pattern from this side like out of what I needed and then I cut out a piece from it an old piece of timber that was just lying about, but it's special. It happened to be the same thickness, so that's all I wanted. Okay, so and then I just cut this off at an angle and replaced it here. But what I've done then was I put two braces in here, two pieces in here to brace it, like you know, and so to make sure that this was safe and what have you, you know. So they're not original, those two, but they're fine. And then this piece, what I done was I got another piece of, this, uh, of timber and I sat with my box knife and I whittled this out. This is a turn thing would not be a turn on a wood lid, but I didn't have a wood lid at my disposal, so I whittled it and there you go, it is fine. Then we sent to America to a lady in America who specializes in supplying um, horsehair for various projects and things, and uh, we sent away for that, and I think that cost us in the region of about $60 to have that between buying it and having it shipped, etc. It cost. And um, so there you go, uh, there it is finished. We went then and uh, we got some paint matched to the colour of what was on the bottom of it and I repainted the bows. Uh, these are referred to bows, picture bow and arrow, they're referred to as bows. This has a soft curve, this one. You'll see rocking horses which, with much sharper kind of turns, you know, they're for bigger children. Like. This would be for, I reckon, maybe a three to five year old child, that kind of age group, you know, you know, perhaps maybe even a little bit younger than that, like it kind of, you know, and, and so on. Like, and a parent would be minding the child while they were on it, like, you know, I, mean, I don't think it's for a child on their own, you know. And it measures about four foot this way and just about 30 inches high, you know, 48 inches that way and about 30 inches high and it's just roughly a foot in depth, do you know what I mean? So it's not a big item, not difficult to display. We normally display it here on our window here, it's what we do, you know. So that's the story of that one and I think that that one just proves, that story proves like about the recycling aspect of the whole thing, you know. Had we not found this like, it would have gone into the pile of timber. Now I imagine that the timber was eventually going to end up going, going to the landfill, going to chipper, you know what I mean, like it's going to end up mulch in someone's garden or whatever or, or that, you know, so so we obviously saved it and it's now going to give pleasure for another hundred years because why won't it? I mean there's absolutely nothing wrong with it now and it's very functional as a rocking horse, okay? So that's today's chat, so thank you very much for dropping by and as I say, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and remember to press the bell icon before you leave so that you'll be notified of our future uploads. Thank you.